to the Gorilla Branders podcast. This is the direct response and social media marketing podcast for bootstrapping entrepreneurs. Yeah. This is our third show. We're really excited to share with you. The last couple weeks have been a lot of fun. Uh, first week we talked about how do you do podcasts, who are we, why we called this show, the specific name that we gave it. Uh, last week we talked about how do you build lists, uh, yeah. direct response marketing, social media marketing, uh, the tools that we use, the sites that we use, yeah. and, and the yeah. reason why we do the things that we do. Mm -hmm. This week... I, I'm really excited to talk about what this gorilla represents. Oh, Lord. <laughs> an entrepreneur. As you guys notice, he likes props. There <laughs> is a difference between what we may say a, a regular entrepreneur or just a, all entrepreneurs with what we would say a bootstrapping entrepreneur. So yeah. let's talk a bit yeah. about yeah. what makes an entrepreneur uh, <clears throat> achieve the title it's like, a, it's like a doctor, yeah. right? Yeah. It's like a, a guy goes to college, gets his bachelor's degree. Yeah. He's been educated, but if he gets his doctorate, yeah, it's a whole other thing. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think my favorite definition comes in story form yeah. from a, a good friend of all of ours who we'll probably have on a future show, uh, Sean Terrio, mm -hmm. when he was uh, dating his, his now wife, uh, Laura, and met his future in-laws for the first time and they said oh Sean so what do you do for work and he said well I'm an entrepreneur and they said so you're unemployed <laughs> so <laughs> I mean yeah yeah, yeah. an entrepreneur <laughs> uh, to me a bootstrapping entrepreneur is uh, you know really putting your mouth where you're, you're putting your your money where your mouth is and, and pushing the chips all in yeah. I think that it's for me it, it contains two um, it, to be successful you've got to have two components to it one, you've got to be uh, relentless in your in your pursuit yeah. um, uh, of, of the goal. You know, uh, <laughs> Stephen Covey calls it. You know, begin with the end in mind. But yeah. you you got to have that thick skin, that persistence, that longevity, that never give up type attitude. But you have to combine that with accurate thinking. Yes. And I, I think that concept was first given to me by uh, uh, Ben Altadonna, Dr. Ben Altadonna. But it's been reiterated by several people. And if you look at what, well, what's that mean, accurate thinking? Accurate thinking means that as an entrepreneur, your good or service, your widget, your gadget, your information product, whatever you're getting out there to the world to, to purchase and consume is something that they actually want to purchase and consume. Right. Exactly. You know, you, yeah, and, that's right. And it's not only that, but you're, you're accurate about your timing to the market. Yep. I mean, think you know, think about like uh, there's a lot of things, especially in the technology realm, that they're first to market. It's like, oh, it's not quite right, didn't take off, and then a couple uh, companies later, a couple mm -hmm. reiterations, it's like, oh, now we've got a home run. So exactly. you know, yeah. accurate thinking about your product or service and the demand that exists, accurate yeah. thinking around the timing of, of the launch of, of that uh, yeah, mi timing. mixed yeah. with that just, you know, go for it type of attitude mm -hmm. that it takes to be an entrepreneur. When we contrast that yeah. with, you know, kind of a, a, a wage earner, right. you know, that's a check in at nine o'clock, mm -hmm. get paid X amount uh, per hour, or X amount per year, yeah. and then you check out. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, it's just exactly. that's not our audience and that's not us. So, yeah, right. you know, when we talk about bootstrapping versus regular, well, I think every entrepreneur, when they start, unless you're already kind of a made man, and we can talk about how you, how you become a made man, because, <laughs> hey, we all want to be made men, right? Exactly. Um, we're all bootstrapping. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all bootstrapping. Yeah. And, um, you know, I could tell a little bit. Well, why don't you tell about, you know, your story? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I can walk through my narrative mm -hmm. really quick, and I can say I was an entrepreneur. Yeah. But here, I was a bootstrapped entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'll just go back. When I was at AT&T, mm -hmm. I was an entrepreneur. Yeah. I was yeah. on staff, on salary, a commissioned sales guy um, that was at a Fortune 10 company. And But I was there when we were going from Yellow Pages to yellowpages.com. Yeah. And I remember I was working on the presentations and I was training the salespeople and the staff every new product launch. I, I'd be there and i interested and, and a part of it in helping bring a youthful entrepreneurial spirit yeah. to it. I had no risk. Mm -hmm. I had no investment. Mm -hmm. I made a thousand dollars a day. I was not a bootstrapped entrepreneur. Yeah. Yeah. But right. I was an entrepreneur in that field. Yeah. When I left that job, that security, making a grand a day and, and having all this, you know, a huge corporation behind me, I started a nonprofit. 
in the music side of things. And, and in a four year period, we did four albums, a couple hundred concerts. Uh, I had a commune, I had 30 people live with us. <laughs> I was bootstrapped to the max. I was so bootstrapped, I had a full time job on top of the nonprofit and all this madness that I had going on just to fund the nonprofit. <laughs> Because we were so bootstrapped, we were watching every penny, everything mattered, and we had not money on our mind, right? <laughs> we had change. Because yeah. every entrepreneur is going for something. It's not always money. Yeah. Sometimes it's social change. Yeah. Sometimes it's, it's glory. Uh, sometimes it's, it's significance or legacy. And, and so when I did the nonprofit, it was bootstrapped to the max. Mm -hmm. uh, the next thing I did, I started a software company, Kikui. We chose to go bootstrapped. We could have taken on uh, angel funding. We could have taken on a VC funding or private equity money. In fact, we could have gone family and friends route and just say, hey, we need you know, a few hundred thousand dollars to scale. Mm -hmm. When we needed money, mm -hmm. we sold more. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. We were bootstrapped. We, we got under $1,000 in the bank account yeah. at certain times. Yeah. And you think about all the clients, all the employees, all the people counting on us when we were starting that up. And we were bootstrapped. Yeah. Uh, and then I started some other companies where I, I had things set up. I started U Realty and I had some things, some cushion to be able to take care of it. Not super bootstrapped. I was, I was, put, I was investing a lot of money and making it happen and scaling it, getting ready to sell it. And then now at Gorilla Branders. So, you know, there's kind of a mix of both, but certainly yeah. I can't shake the bootstrapping thing mm -hmm. that is now so ingrained in me. So how about you, yeah. Drill? Talk to us a bit about your experience yeah. being entrepreneurial, maybe the times that were really high risk, you know, and, and you're bootstrapping and you have to make it. Uh, so talk to us a bit about that. Well, um, before I got to actually founding my own business, I've been in the entertainment industry since I was five. So I kind of had a mindset of, you know, what do I want to do in terms of how do I get from being the actor, the entertainer to the person who owns it? You know, and I remember the first lesson that I ever got is when I was five years old, my older cousin took me on set and he introduced me to everybody on set. Hmm. And then the first thing he said is, none of these people matter. And then he walked me over and he showed me two guys sitting, sitting in the back in this dark corner, just kind of talking, looking at everything they had on suits. He said, those two guys own everything here. Mm -hmm. He said, that's the guy you want to be. You don't want to be the guy getting the checks. You want to be the guy writing the checks. <laughs> and that kind of Amen. stuck in my mind. You know, <laughs> exactly. You know, that stuck yeah. in my mind for a long, long time. Yeah. And then when I was 18 years old, I had met my business partner, Rob Miles. You know, we had met um, down in Southern California at the Anaheim Convention Center at an anime convention. Mm -hmm. And that day we created my first company, Anime Superstar. You know, and from there, it took us a while to really figure out what to do. You know, because we spent years saying, okay, what is his business? Mm. What problem is it solving? You know, what market are we serving? Do we want to stick in this certain realm? Do we want to, you know, serve this certain market? And it wasn't until 2011 mm. where we figured out what we needed to do. Mm. And then that's when we came out with our first show, our first podcast. We started traveling around doing different things like that. And over a while, it evolved to Executive Geek Productions. And then Tech For Real came along. Then App right. For That came along and different things like that. And then I finally met you. And then I eventually met you as well. So my bootstrapping journey was really one of those. I was literally a fresh kid right out of high school. Mm -hmm. I knew a bit about business, but it was more about the entertainment business. I didn't know anything about, you know, ROI. I didn't even know what CRM meant. I didn't know what mm -hmm. B2B was. I, it was so many things I didn't know. I understood yeah. contracts. I understood NDAs, but I didn't understand a lot about what it really means to have to sit down there and get a business license. Yeah. What it means to have to, you know, figure out what retention is, you know, how to scale. I was like, what the hell, how to scale? Yeah. I'm like, I weigh 180 pounds, yeah. you know? You know, and there was a lot of things that I didn't know, but I had to learn it. Right. And I think for me, my definition of what bootstrapping is, is literally coming in the door and saying, I have something really valuable. I don't really know what the hell I'm doing, but I'm willing to learn. I'm going to be stubborn as hell until I learn it and make it into something. You got to just jump. You know? yeah, yeah, you got to jump. You know, and it was a lot and of now, jump. We'd like yeah. you just to press pause on the podcast and tell us your story. <laughs> We'll wait. Oh, we'll wait. No, we can't do that. We have to keep oh, talking. Okay. But this isn't about us, right? This is about you. We're sharing our story yeah. uh, so you can understand some of the paths that we've walked mm -hmm. and what it's been like for us. But we're not here, just the three of us talking. We're mindful that you're tuned in. And so thanks for your time. Uh, and if we could sit down with you and hear your story, we'd be interested because you have a story. Yeah. People need to know it. And again, that goes back to our very first podcast. How do you start a podcast? Why do it? What's the impact of it? But let's dive in more into a bootstrapping entrepreneur. Well, I mean, I can get into, you know, my, 
yeah. personal story of bootstrapping, and you know, I think I've I've been bootstrapping since a very early age. Uh, Sixteen years old, we nice. uh, my my dad and I put a little company together, and we had a concept of you know, I mean, you guys are all barbecuers, right? Oh yeah, barbecue. Oh yeah. Back in the day, there wasn't a huge gas barbecue. We still had to use you know uh, charcoal and that kind of thing, yeah. and. And what do you do to get the coals going back in the day? You'd get a piece of cardboard or something oh, yeah. and have to fan it, right? <laughs> so we created this barbecue fan nice. idea and, and had it pressed at a, at a local uh, metal shop and, nice. and took it to our first show and started floating around. And we started getting some interest. Oh, that looks cool. Oh, yeah. And it kind of fit right next to your barbecue tools. And nice. people started asking questions about, well, what's the minimums? You know, what's the, what's the unit cost? What's the SRP? And I was like, wow, that's the first introduction to entrepreneurship because I didn't even know what SRP meant yeah. or I didn't know yeah. what the unit cost was. Or I didn't, yeah. you know. So, um, you know, fast forward a little bit. Um, uh, I, I've had some some other businesses that that we we bootstrapped, and you know, over the last say 20 years, you know, I, I've I've uh, lost my fortune twice, uh, not once but twice, and been able to bounce back. And part of that was. You know, I wasn't thinking accurately, yeah. or I wasn't persistent enough. Yeah. An, an yeah. example of not being persistent enough: a friend of mine, Brett Dias, uh, when I was living on the East Coast in Pennsylvania, uh, we secured distribution rights for the whole state of California mm. for plastic fencing. Nice. And uh, it may not seem like you know much, but if you go out to the farm or cow country now in California, you don't see wood fencing anymore because yeah. it breaks down. Mm -hmm. You have to repaint it every year. Yeah. You know the cows can break it easy. Right. All you see is plastic fencing. Mm -hmm. Well, I had the exclusive on plastic recycled mm -hmm. fence material in California. What happened was I, you know, he, Brett came out. And we came out here and started visiting some of our contacts at a couple local y lumber yards. And for a couple guys, two, you know, basically two guys in a row, two different lumber yards looked at it and go, ah, it looks cool, but we have something else. It wasn't plastic fencing, it was some, some hybrid wood. Hmm. And the price point's a little bit high, so I'm gonna pass. Well, I got two, two rejections, mm. and I probably left, you know, a huge, huge pot of gold on the table, yeah. right? Yeah. So what did I learn in retrospect, looking back at that? Mm. You know, if you're accurate in your timing on the market and the product, and it's actually something that's gonna bring huge value and, and, and you know, really add benefit to people's lives, don't give up at one no or two no's or three no's or even 10 no's. Talk, how many authors are out there? Yeah. I mean, how many times did Tim Ferriss get denied for his book? You know, <laughs> right, but, yeah. no, I, I forget what it was he talks about, but yeah. I, mean, I want to say 20, 30, 40 times. Right. No, 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 no. Well, what if you stopped after the fifth or the sixth or the tenth? Yeah. Now, you got to, again, combine that with the accurate thinking that we've yeah. talked about, yeah. you know, and make sure that, well, is, is this is this me or my product or service or is this just yeah. actually the timing is right, the product is right, the demand is there. Mm -hmm. And let's talk maybe a little bit about, well, how do we, how can we test, how can we test mm -hmm. without spending our whole bankroll, like I've mm -hmm. done a couple times, like we've all done, mm -hmm. yeah. and seeing oh, it yeah. kind of go up in flames mm -hmm. and go, oh no, hey, honey, well, sorry, ah. <laughs> you know, how can oh, we yeah. test? Yeah. And the tools today yeah, that right. are available to entrepreneurs today yeah. are yeah. better than they've ever been because we have things, we have Absolutely. marketing platforms yeah. like Indiegogo, yes. Yes. right? Yes. Well, Indiegogo, people go, oh, well, that's not a marketing platform. That's, that's a thing to, to get fundraising. Well, is it? Say I have, these are, my, these are our drinks, okay? Yeah, right. So Party Aid, um, yeah. we also yeah. have Fit Aid and Golf Aid, right. okay? Mm -hmm. So say we're gonna launch one of our next three beverages. Mm -hmm. Either Focus Aid, Workplace Performance yes. without high sugar, high caffeine, mm -hmm. Travel Aid, Boost Your Immune System while you travel, or Life Aid, Daily Supplement Drink for Baby Boomers. Yes. What if I created a uh, Kickstarter or Indiegogo mm -hmm. campaign around each of those drinks yeah. and put them out there on the market at z almost zero cost to me? I don't even have to have the drinks developed. Mm -hmm. I could just have the artwork right. for them, yeah. okay? And the description, yeah. and me talking about the drink, mm -hmm. and see which one of those three mm -hmm. gets the most funding? Meaning people are putting their money yeah. where their mouth is. It's exactly. not a focus yeah. group that says, yeah, I would buy that. Okay, mm -hmm. well go ahead and give me three bucks. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe not. So yeah. we're not in focus group. Focus groups is a thing in the past. It doesn't yeah. even work anymore. Right. What works with today, though, they are focus yeah, groups. Yeah, that, well, that's a focus group where people exactly. are put, opening their wallet. Right. So whoever opens their wallet the most for one of those three, that that's is the made. one that we're gonna go with. That's the one we're gonna put our next $250,000 into and create that beverage. So here's kind of a challenge question. Would you say that bootstrapping entrepreneurs 
have, in a sense, less risk nowadays than kind of what we had to deal with, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Of course they do, especially with things like 3D printing. Yeah, I mean, print. you, know, God, yes. you know, 3D printing, yes. it's like, oh, I can print yeah. one prototype. That's you right. know, you know what minimums yeah. are on these? You know, <laughs> yeah. 202,000. Right. You know, yeah. 202,000. Imagine if I could just yeah. print one, which right. is now available and becoming available in that technology. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah. I think, uh, and maybe we could talk about this a little bit. You know, you're at an advantage today yes. to be yes, a bootstrapping entrepreneur versus, you know, someone that's got tons of money and and, and, and and no focus on ROI or cost control yeah. and that kind of thing. And well, what are some of the, I really want to kind of dive into the failures and lessons that all three of us have kind of learned of where we've been, where we've come to, and where we're going in terms of what is it that we have learned. What, what are some of the funniest, hardest, maybe even weirdest lessons of your journeys of being a bootstrapping entrepreneur that you guys have seen that still affect you today? Mm -hmm. when, I, when, I yeah. when I think of bootstrapping entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. here's the pictures that come to my mind. Mm -hmm. An entrepreneur lands on the island, mm -hmm. gets off the boat, mm -hmm. and goes to explore. The bootstrapping entrepreneur Burns the boat. Yeah. See, yeah. the entrepreneur crosses the bridge, looks back, and moves forward. The bootstrap entrepreneur cuts the rope, drops the bridge, not going back. Full maximum risk. No matter what it takes, I will die or I will succeed. Amen, is brother. the bootstrapping entrepreneur. Okay. Did I, I look, now you look excited. That was good. That was good. Was just, He's all excited. Kind of if you guys yeah. haven't noticed, right? <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, story for you. What do you got? Uh, I'm going to admit something right now that I don't mm -hmm. think I've told anybody. But in junior high, as, as late in age as junior high, I was mm -hmm. in junior high school. I was so afraid and intimidated to, by confrontation, hmm. even engaging uh, 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 peers and, and peop especially people of authority yeah. um, that, you know, I, I mean, I would break down in tears. It would just hmm. tear me up. Mm -hmm. So the biggest benefit that I've ever had that set me on my entrepreneurial path is being forced yeah. in a sales yeah. position mm -hmm. to sell. Yeah. And I know, uh, I, I can't remember if it was last week or two weeks ago, mm -hmm. we talked about that how we had all had mm -hmm. selling positions, door yeah. to door with, with Kirby yeah, backings, Kirby right? You first, no? yeah. uh, I showed up at, at Morgan Stanley, Stanley Dean Witter wow. interning my freshman year in college. Wow. Show up, I'm like, got these stock sheets, like, oh, I think these companies are great. And the guy's like looking at me like, what the hell? Open the phone book, start at exactly. A, and dial for dollars. That's it. So I spent a whole summer, here's me, wow. and I was a little bit better by then because I, I had some customer service uh, uh, roles and, and some <laughs> selling roles, but having to deal direct, face-to-face -face mm -hmm. or on the That's phone, right. yeah. that is how you get over the hump That's on, on any you know yeah. nervousness yep. or anything right? it's like yeah. you got to just do it That's so right. if you're at home right now and you're going gosh i you know this is a great product and yeah i'm thinking accurately and i know the timing's right and the market's right for it and my price point and i've thought of all the, these these different angles and you know part of that being persistent and and, yeah. and pushing and pushing and pushing is your ability to sell and if mm -hmm. you can't sell your product or service, then it's not going to be successful. Mm. And so, how do bootstrappers uh, actually become, you know, big successful entrepreneurs? You said it earlier by selling. That's okay? right. And I and another piece of that, and I've learned in my um, experience, is you have to believe not only in your product but believe in yourself. Mm. You know, one one of the scariest things for me and my business partner when we first started out is it was just two of us. We, we were walking around, you know, we created these cool t-shirts and cool jackets, you know, hey, yeah, we're anime superstar. And we would go to all these big conferences, you know, we went to Verizon Developer Conference, we went to CES, you know, we went to E3, we went to all these places. And the scariest one is when we first went to CES, it was just the two of us. You know, and anyone who's ever been to CES, you guys know that's a 120 person thousand show. Yeah. That's a big show, big companies, billions of dollars there. And we literally were just walking around like, what the hell do we say to people? What do we, you know, how do we do it? You know, how do we let people know that we're this little mini media production company that's mm -hmm. based in video games, anime, you know, comic books and stuff and why it's relevant to their business. And the first year, 
we kind of just messed it all up. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't really have our pitch right. We didn't really understand who we were. We didn't, but the biggest thing we found out, we didn't necessarily believe in what we were saying. Mm -hmm. And then we came back the following year after we really sat down and said, what the hell do we really want to say to people? Mm -hmm. And we came back and we did it again the following year. And literally we start getting products from companies. Yeah. We start getting people wanting us to review stuff, wanting to be on our show, yeah. you know, wanting to talk to us because we had figured out and started believing yeah. What we were selling and believing ourselves. Because he's like, wait a minute, we know what we do well. We know what value we bring. We know why you should give us these five Samsung tablets because the people in the anime community, that's what they use because they don't like using the other company's tablets. It, and yeah, like it's, that. A, yeah. it's essential. It, yeah. it reminds me of I was encouraged by uh, some, some friends to go take the Tesla experience. Mm, so, yes. You know, I went nice. into Los Gatos uh, over the hill and, and uh, went through that Tesla experience. And those salespeople, mm -hmm. you know, they're not ba paid on commission. I don't know if you know that. They're mm -hmm. they're they're on a s salary. Nice. Uh, they believe in that product. Mm -hmm. They yeah. believe in that product. Yeah. They are well versed in that product. Mm -hmm. They have studied that product. Yeah. They know that product inside and out. Mm -hmm. And I was rapid firing. The yeah. toughest questions I could come up with. I was talking about the the fire on YouTube and the car blowing up <laughs> right. and how do I. How do I, you know? Mm -hmm. And this young 19 year old kid stayed totally composed and he was awesome. Not only answering my questions, but answering my questions with just great insight awesome. And, awesome. and value. So I think at home, you know, what's your 30 second pitch? Yes. You know, yes. If, if your job is to sell, you're an entrepreneur, your job is to get out there and sell, mm -hmm. what is your 30 second pitch? You know, if you're stuck in an elevator with somebody who's a decision maker and they're getting pitched all day, how do you differentiate? yourself mm -hmm. and how do you even do it maybe in shorter time because that's something that um, even Raymond you know one of our partners we created something at CS called the 15 second pitch even better that, sometimes <laughs> you only had, well it was a really cool thing that we did it's like and, seven minute abs six minute abs I'm, I'm going for six <laughs> minutes <laughs> well, it's cool because what we found out is that even big companies nowadays don't even know what their 15 second pitch is yeah you know we were talking yeah. to big companies I mean I'm not even talking about you know bootstrapping companies like we you know are used to working with we were talking to multi-billion dollar companies said what's your 15 second pitch people said Oh, I need so, to think about Drew, that, you know? Give us the 15 second pitch for Tech For Real. You do it yeah. for life and I'll do it for Gorilla Brand. Sure. So let's do I an can example. Do tech For Real is we make it real to you. What are you really buying? What do you really want and how would it really work? Awesome. Life yeah. A Beverage Company, we're getting yeah. kids and adults off the high sugar, high caffeine, high salt sport and energy drinks and onto something that's healthy, that tastes great, has targeted vitamin supplements for your particular avocation. Nine seconds, beautiful. Gorilla Brand is go. Yeah, I mean Gorilla Brand we bring the art and the science together. We help you outsmart the system, we help you intimidate your competitors, help you educate your clients, and ultimately dominate the market. 10 seconds, see? And oh, that's the thing. Yeah. And the question is, you know, what's your pitch? Mm -hmm. Do you have one for yourself personally? Do you have one for your business or your businesses? I wanna talk again about uh, some proof that you are a bootstrapping entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, so here's a couple tests. If you call yourself an entrepreneur, and maybe people call you an entrepreneur, maybe you're a CEO, you're a business owner, maybe you're doing something on the side, and maybe it's a product, a service, doesn't matter. When people come to you, and they come to help you, to work for you, do they expect you to pay them more than their last job? Uh, do they expect you to take care of them? Does every vendor charge you top dollar? Does every partner coming to you what they want from you? Because if so, then you're at least giving off this vibe and this energy that you're just an entrepreneur that's funded and ready to start shoveling out money. Yeah. If people are volunteering their time, if, if, if your COO volunteers for the first few months and does sweat equity and says, I'll do whatever it takes, I believe in you, I believe in the product, you might be a bootstrapping entrepreneur. How about if you're a CEO and you have taken out the trash in the office or vacuum yes. the office? Absolutely. Then you're a bootstrapper. Yes. If, yes. if you have payroll due the next day and you got a $10,000 nut and you only got a grand in the bank, you you're are a bootstrapping bootstrap entrepreneur. entrepreneur. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, was, oh, man. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's so many you can add to that. And I, and I actually, I want to take a list of call to action. You know, you guys submit to us. What has made you a bootstrapping entrepreneur? I mean, what we want to hear. You know, is it driving on trips in a you know in a busted truck? Right. You know, is it spending long road trips with people you may not like and you might like? Is it realizing that you maybe should not start business with your friends and maybe you should? You know, is it realizing that you not only have no money, you have no resources and nobody to help you, but you still make it work? And also thinking of another note of 
some of the most successful businesses started in garages, you know, started out of people's cars, started at people's mom's houses, you know, started in people's, you know, basements. You know, I tell people all the time, anime superstars started at a coffee table in Anaheim. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, it started at a coffee table in Anaheim of yeah, two dudes right. talking. And then it became an idea, it became a company, it became a logo, it became, and then it became a brand, you know, and it's just like you have to really think about how do you want to start this stuff? And then what are you willing to sacrifice? Because that's another big part of sure. bootstrapping entrepreneurs that we all know about yeah. is sacrifice. Yeah. I've been fired from jobs because I've been trying to build my own business. <laughs> I've been, I've had to quit jobs. You know, I've been dumped. <laughs> you know, I, no. uh, yeah, you know, it's happened. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've had a lot of fights with friends, family, you know, other business partners because I believe in what I do. Mm. And that you sacrifice know, yeah. comes in many shapes and forms. You know, yeah. it comes in, you know, financial sacrifice oh, going yes. from, you know, I went from a, 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 a I was self-employed as a chiropractor, but I was making, you know, some significant income, you know, in excess of three hundred, three hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, to not taking any salary, you know, with with Life Aid for for over a year, mm -hmm. um, it comes with sacrifice to the family yeah. and making Huge. sure that you know Huge. your wife, or your girlfriend, your mm -hmm. your kids are yeah. are on the same page as you. Yeah, and, yeah. and that's and, a big you know, part. Because when you put your chips all in, they're putting their chips all in at the same that's time. Exactly. And uh, it pressure. comes with sacrifice of time. Yeah. Uh, working a nine to five, well, you know, you check in at nine, you leave at five. That's right. When you're an entrepreneur, sometimes, I mean, I think this just, you know, as of like two weeks ago, we had worked, you know, 43 days without a day off. Mm -hmm. uh, my, Orion, my business yeah. partner and I, I mean, it was crazy. So. It, it, the sacrifice comes in many forms. If you're not willing to make the sacrifice, yeah. then you're probably not going to have the success because yeah. there typically is no success without some significant sacrifice, significant especially at the yeah. beginning. Because you'll lose sleep, yeah. you'll lo lose money, you'll lose weight, you know, <laughs> you'll lose patience. Dude, tell me about that. Huh? So, um, <laughs> as far as, there, it's not just financial sacrifice, it's not just uh, the sacrifice your family makes. Yeah. When your eye stop starts twitching and you can't get it to stop, <laughs> then you know you're stressed out bootstrapping yes, the nerve. So I'm, I'm serious. When you start having cluster headaches, you think you're stroking out because your back of your head's exploding yeah. because you're so over you're the top tight. stressed. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you're yeah. You might be yeah. a bootstrapping You bust out your shirt like Ian, you know, yeah. like the Incredible Hawk, then maybe. <laughs> Listen, guys, good episode. We're out yes. of time. But uh, yes. we got a killer uh, guest coming on next yes. week. Really excited. Andy yeah. Van Valer. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. I've known Andy about 15 years. Andy helped start Borland with Fleet Connie. He's one of the founding employees. He he helped get Netflix off the ground yes. when it was first going. Yes, uh, Starfish, Lightsurf, Verisign, the list goes on and on and on of the companies he's been foundationally a part of as an entrepreneur. Great. Uh, I'm really excited to have him come share because it's not going to be about bootstrapping entrepreneurship as much as holistic entrepreneurship, uh, kids doing it, mm -hmm. uh, gals doing it, uh, yeah. single moms doing yeah. it, uh, teams doing it, individuals doing it, funded or not funded. And, and again, we're not against funding. We're not against people uh, having balance and uh, because that, there is something to that. We're going to have Orion on in two weeks, mm -hmm. uh, your partner, the CEO of Life Aid, really talking about uh, doing the family and friends funding and then yeah. eventually, you know, maybe going, uh, getting funding from people you don't know. And, yeah. and what is it like to actually fund yeah. a company? So we're not against funding. We don't think it's, you have to, you know, be a crazy unbalanced person. Yeah. There is balance that you can strike. Um, but. There is definitely a reality that some of us have a uh, overwhelming, you know, comfortability yeah. with risk. Mm -hmm. And the risk is not just financial mm -hmm. or physical. It's emotional. It's spiritual. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, as we continue on this podcast, uh, we'll continue to pour our hearts out. Me, I just rip my heart out, throw it on the table. And if you like what you hear, then you keep on tuning in. So... <clears throat> Rock on. Yes. We'll see you next week. Make sure you guys submit questions, comments, whatever. We'll have the information right down wherever my pen comes down here. I don't know what. <laughs> It'll magically appear. How about that? Exactly. Thank you very much. <laughs>